then two minutes later, more coal. And then every minute after that, more and more coal gets delivered to his room. He cannot burn the coal any faster. He cannot make the train need more coal faster. So the coal piles up in his room, so much so that he is completely drowning in all this coal and he can no longer do his job of placing any coal onto the fire. Hello angels and welcome to the Glucose Goddess Show. I'm Justine Chospé, I'm a French biochemist obsessed with helping you understand how your body actually works because most of us do not know how it works. So in this episode, I wanna to talk to you about energy. And I wanna to talk to you about that friend from high school whose Instagram you look at once in a while and you ask yourself, how does she have so much energy? She has two kids, this intense job, she's always posting photos of her working out, on vacation, doing stuff, and you're just sitting there on your couch, exhausted? I totally get you. And by the way, my friends often ask me how I have so much energy, so I'm here to share with you all of my secrets. In order to understand this very important topic of energy, we have to discuss your mitochondria. So your mitochondria are these little tiny, tiny factories that live inside of your cells. You have trillions of them in your body. And the job of your mitochondria is very simply put to turn your food into energy. Specifically, your mitochondria turn the glucose from your food into energy. So if they work well, everything goes great. You get up in the morning, you're full of energy, you're excited, you have your big to-do list, you're excited to finish it. But if your mitochondria are not working well, well, you're exhausted. And picking up your kids from school is way too tiring. Going grocery shopping, no thank you. At 2 p.m. you already are wondering, when the heck are you gonna be able to go lay in bed and fall asleep? So that is usually because your little mitochondria are not working and most of us are in this situation where they're trying the best that they can, but unfortunately, because of the way we're eating, our mitochondria are not working properly. And there are some really interesting studies done on people who are born with mitochondrial defects. So they are born with mitochondria that do not function very well. And one particular study is called The Spectrum of Exercise Tolerance in Mitochondrial Myopathies, a study of 40 patients. And in this study, they put participants onto stationary exercise bikes, like the ones you see at the gym. And they asked the participants to exercise for as long and as hard as they could. And they found that the people who were born with mitochondrial defects could only exercise for about half the time that people without mitochondrial defects could. So if your mitochondria are damaged or compromised, you're not gonna be able to exercise very long. And you're not gonna be able to handle stress, also stress from every day, like, a layoff, a stressful relationship, just regular old work stress, as well as if your mitochondria are working well. So the objective here, my dears, is going to be to make sure that your mitochondria are functioning at the top level of performance so that you have all of the energy in the world to do all the things that you wanna do. So let's dive a little bit deeper and see what's going on with your mitochondria. Imagine that your grandfather his whole life, he's always wanted to work on a steam train. And finally, after he retires, he enlists and works on a steam train. And his dream was to work in the train's engine and to be the stoker that put the coal onto the fire to make the wheels of the train turn. Now, of course, everybody in the family thinks that he's crazy for doing this. What a weird idea. Why would you do that after you retire, Grandpa? But he doesn't care. It's his dream, so he does it. And here's how it goes. So he's sitting in this room all day, and hour by hour, he gets a delivery of some coal. A little bit of coal every hour, he puts it on the fire, it burns, it creates steam, and then the train runs smoothly. So the first day of your grandfather's new job, everything is going perfectly. He's getting this steady delivery of coal, the steam is going, the train is going, no problem. Now, second day, 9 a.m., he gets the first delivery of coal, no problem. But then, five minutes later, another knock on the door, more coal. And so he thinks, okay, I don't need this right now, the train doesn't need this much coal right now, but I'll just put it right by my side and I can use it a bit later. And then, two minutes later, more coal. And then every minute after that, more and more coal gets delivered to his room. He cannot burn 
the coal any faster. He cannot make the train need more coal faster. So the coal piles up in his room, so much so that he is completely drowning in all this coal and he can no longer do his job of placing any coal onto the fire. The fire stops, the steam stops, and the train stops. He got too much of a good thing too quickly. Now, why this strange story? Why am I telling you this? Well, because your mitochondria kind of work the same way. Your mitochondria are a little bit like your grandfather. They love when they get a steady supply of glucose every day from the food that you eat. They burn the glucose for energy. You have the energy to do the stuff you want to do, to go play, to go to work, to walk around, to think, to laugh. But if your mitochondria get too much glucose too quickly, they become overwhelmed, just like your grandfather. They stress out, they go on strike, and they can no longer burn glucose efficiently anymore. And you feel that as fatigue. Now, when is it that we give glucose too quickly to our body? And when is it that these mitochondria become tired? When we experience a glucose spike. So if you are tired, if you relate to the concept of chronic fatigue, of waking up in the morning, wondering where the heck all your energy has already gone and it's only 8 a.m. If you feel like there was a version of you in the past that had way more energy and you want to get that energy back, the solution is not to eat as much sugar and carbs as possible. Because you might think, oh, this sweet food, let's take, I don't know, a slice of toast with some jam. You might think, oh, this sweet food is going to give me energy because sweetness releases dopamine in the brain. But dopamine gives us pleasure, not energy. So when we eat sweet foods, we get this very quick burst or rush of pleasure in the brain that we can mistake for energy. Again, that's not energy. On the inside, at the level of a mitochondria, when we eat sugar and a lot of carbs, the energy production, the energy capacity of the mitochondria is being harmed. Your mitochondria are not functioning as well as they would like to because they're getting too much glucose delivered too quickly. What do we do about this? How can we deliver glucose in a steady pace to our mitochondria so that they can burn it properly, so that they function at their highest level, and so that they don't become overwhelmed, and so that you don't become chronically fatigued? Hey, really quickly, if you can't always do my food hacks and you want to eat the carbs that you love with less impact on your glucose levels, I have identified four molecules that if you combine them together in a capsule, you will create something that cuts the glucose spike of a meal by up to 40%. So something that's even more powerful than vinegar, because vinegar only gets us to 30%. So the four molecules are mulberry leaf, lemon peel extract, cinnamon, and lots of incredible antioxidants from green vegetables. These molecules have over 25 clinical trials backing their impact on our glucose levels. 100% plant-based, 100% vegan, 100% natural. So you might be wondering, okay, well, where is this capsule that combines all these molecules that I can use? I'm happy to announce that I have created it for you. It's called anti-spike formula. You take two before a meal, it cuts the glucose spike of carbs by up to 40%, 100% made out of plants and tested by over 25 clinical trials. Link is in the description. Okay, back to the episode. Well, the first place to look is, you guessed it, in our food. And I've spent the last few years synthesizing from all the latest scientific research, 10 core principles that allow us to eat the carbs that we like without creating glucose spikes. So without hurting our mitochondria and while promoting their health and all of the energy that we want to get. You can find these 10 hacks in the description of this episode. You can download a one pager with all 10 of them to get started. But I want to cover a few here first. The first most important hack for steady energy all day is about breakfast. So as I mentioned, when we eat things that are sweet, that taste sweet, like orange juice, granola, breakfast cereal, honey, we feel that dopamine rush. And that dopamine rush is not energy. Again, it is pleasure, but it's often confused for energy. What you want to do if you really want to get proper energy sustainably is you want to eat in the morning 
a savory breakfast instead of a sweet one. That means a breakfast that is based around protein with some fat. You can put some starch in there and you can put some sweet taste in the form of whole fruit if you want. I have also some free recipes of my favorite savory breakfasts in the description of this episode. So that's the number one place to start. Another really, 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 really important hack is that when you do want to eat sweet foods, which by the way is totally fine, I love sugar, I eat sugar every day, but I know how to eat it to not hurt my mitochondria. So when you do want to eat sweet foods, make sure you never eat them on an empty stomach. Make sure you have, for example, the chocolate or the cookie that you love as dessert after a meal instead of on an empty stomach or as snacks. So why dessert after a meal? Because after a meal, there's already a lot of food in our digestive system. So when we eat the sugar, let's take the example of a slice of chocolate cake. When you eat the slice of chocolate cake, that sweetness is going to release lots of dopamine in your brain and you're going to feel good for a while. And then the sugar is actually not going to arrive so quickly into your bloodstream because the food already in your digestive system is going to slow it down. So your mitochondria are not going to receive a super big rush of sugar. Instead, it's going to arrive in a more sustained manner as the rest of the meal digests. So taking the example of your grandfather again, he's not going to receive a massive delivery of coal all at once. He's going to get a little bit of coal every 30 minutes and he's going to be able to manage that really well. So I hope that's clear. Again, if you want to get started, click the link in the description of this episode to get my one pager of my 10 most important hacks for healthy mitochondria and sustained energy. And that is all we have time for today. I will see you next time. Bye.